Good morning, good morning. This is Doing Relationships Right. I'm Jennifer Hervitz and I'm your host every Tuesday and I always say it, I have the best guests and I do today as well. I'm so happy to have you. It's Lisa Zeiderman is with me today. She's a, a certified divorce financial analyst. Now listen everybody, I've had financial analysts on my show before, but the topic we're doing today is honestly, it's new and it's 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 a new one. You guys are going to love it. I know when, I, when, when you reached out to me, I was a little bit nervous about this topic. It's a little controversial, but I'm ready to get on it. Lisa, how are you, honey? Thanks for being here this morning. I'm great, and I'm so excited to be here. Um, this is such an interesting topic, obviously. Let's share it. Let's tell everybody. So we're going to talk about vaccines and COVID and what happens when you're co-parenting and one of the parents says yay and the other one says no way. Right, because and I'll tell you, with my situation, my I call him my husband. Everyone knows my husband and I are the closest friends, so we never have, we very rarely have these issues. So to have someone on to talk about high conflict divorce and things that happen, and, and look at like you could be in a very good relationship, and this could be a topic that just you just, you just don't agree on. So. Tell us, Lisa, what happens? What do we do? Where do we start? Tell me first about your background. Sure. Please. So I am a matrimonial attorney. And as you um, noted, I'm also a certified divorce financial analyst, which is, I'm told, a rare combination, actually, to have. And I have a firm in New York and in, um, in White Plains as well. And we handle high conflict divorces, complex financial issues and complex custodial issues. And one of the topics now that we are starting to deal with in a bigger way is going to be the vaccine debate, I would call it. Um, you know, right now we have had a lot of disputes about whether children should attend school virtually or in person, the risks that are involved in terms of in-person learning. Um, just over the last two weeks, I have been in court many, many times discussing whether children should be virtual or um, or being in school in person for socialization reasons or for safety concerns, particularly because people also have other members of their household who could be at risk and haven't yet been vaccinated, right. um, whether they should be at home. And in fact, um, we have had a lot of our, a good amount of our clients, I wouldn't say a lot, but a good amount of our clients if they're having their children tested in the last couple of weeks because their children who are in these so-called safe pods or in these very safe you know, situations in terms yeah. of daycare are unfortunately contracting COVID. Right. Okay, so let's start at the beginning here. Well, you know, back last March when I decided to shut everything down, I have an autoimmune disease. So I've been in my house since last March, legit. Um, and I am, I'm going to tell everyone very honestly, I'm pro-vaccine. I am I'm like, I could not get it. I'm, thank God I got the first one three weeks ago and I cannot get the second one. I'm like counting the days so that I can leave my house. Um, and I know that every state is different. Um, the way they rolled out the vaccines are all different and everyone's having, you know, people are driving other places to get it and people are yes. lying about it. I just feel like everyone should, that's just my stance, take it or leave it. Um, what do you do? What What do you do when one of your, if my husband said to me, our kids are not getting it, I don't know what I would do. You know, this issue has um, been around for a very long time. Yes. And I would say probably about 10 years ago, I had a case that I had taken on where the wife had signed away her rights to have vaccinations for her child. And after doing that, she had come to me regretting that she had actually signed away that right. And we had had a full-blown trial on this very issue, having the pediatrician come in and talk about why vaccinations are so important, uh, talking about why the child you know, would need to go to school and have vaccinations. And then last year, um, actually in 2019, 20, there was an outbreak of the rubella and, and right. measles. And the law came down that the children had to be vaccinated, notwithstanding even any religious concerns. I now have several cases where children are not vaccinated. And the one parent doesn't always know that the child isn't vaccinated. I oh mean, at the moment, God. I literally have a case where the parent was lied to about the children being vaccinated. And when I came on the case, he said to me, I'm not really sure that my children were vaccinated. And I said, I think you should call the pediatrician. And it turned out that the children were not vaccinated and had been going to a religious school and therefore right. no one was actually paying close attention. Right. But this issue 
is like many issues, is not an issue that a court can decide. So what a court has to decide is which parent is in the better position to make the decision as to whether the child will be vaccinated. Now, if there's state law and, and your children have to go to school and there's no exemption, then your children will have to be vaccinated. End of story. But if there's choices involved and there's disagreement between two parents, like many issues, the court is not in a position to decide whether the child should be vaccinated, whether the child should go to private school or public school, or whether the child should be home um, schooling or in-person schooling. The court is in the position to determine which parent oh, is exactly. in the better position and is more thoughtful and has perhaps a bit, bit better judgment as to how to make that determination and whether that parent can put the child's best interests in front of their own interests. And that's how a court is going to decide whether wow. or not a child gets vaccinated, frankly. So it really doesn't even matter on the vac. It's, it's not about the vaccine. It's about the, which parent is more well-equipped to make that decision. That's very interesting. So I have a question for you, Lisa. If your child, my kids go to private school, will this, do you think, in your opinion, I don't know if you even know, maybe you can't answer the putting you on the spot, will the COVID vaccine be mandatory? They are starting to talk about it. The bar associations have started to talk about it being mandatory. I don't think there's enough research yet yeah. in terms of certainly young children. Um, they were starting to do research for children now, I believe, 12 to you know, 18. Um, a few months ago when I had written my article in the New York Law Journal, I think it was started, the research was starting at 16 years old. So there's not enough research done yet, I think, to determine whether or not children will, it will be mandatory for children to be vaccinated. But my guess is that eventually it will be. I mean, it, this is a disease that has unfortunately killed a large population. I mean, and to put your children at risk, it, it just doesn't make sense. Now, there have been um, mandatory vaccinations, and this goes way back actually to a case called Jacobson versus Massachusetts, where smallpox was involved. Right. And there was a um, mandate that children be vaccinated. And there was no choice. As I said, the measles outbreak, which actually happened in a county that was very close to um, where I live in Rockland County, that particular um, area, everyone had to get vaccinated. And it went up to the appellate division. And the appellate division determined that children must be vaccinated, that um, there was no choice. So I think that depending upon the severity that is seen in children, and we haven't yet you know, with the UK, I was reading this morning, the UK is starting to see some severity in terms of reaction to COVID in very small children. There, there definitely isn't enough research yet, I think, in terms of this issue. And I think this is an issue that's going to be on the forefront. You know, right now, it's, it's, and I think, by the way, there's going to be other issues. What Absolutely. if, as a parent, you've decided not to vaccinate? Right. So, right, as a parent, you're not vaccinating yourself. Are you then putting your child at risk? That's a huge question. Right? Right. And, and then what is going to happen in terms of your children's socialization? Are other parents going to want your child to be vaccinated if, they're, if your child is going to be playing with their children? Will the schools, private schools, public schools mandate this? These are all issues that are going to be, I think, you know, arising as we go through this Absolutely. particular area. Right. There are so many issues that parents unfortunately don't agree on. This will be one of many. Right. So I guess my question for, you know, for this podcast sake and for my listener, listeners, listener, is what do you, I mean, do you, what do you do? Do you get your, you know, do you make a list? Do you get your pros, cons? Do you go to the, I mean, it's, it's going to be a fight. I mean, obviously you're going to have an issue with your ex or your, right, your partner. So I would say, I always tell people that they should enlist the um, advice of providers. Yes. Right. And so the first stop is going to be your pediatrician to find out if there's any reason why the pediatrician disagrees with the concept of your child being vaccinated when this comes. Right. And if the pediatrician is behind um, the idea of vaccination and, and is supportive of vaccination, that's going to be an uphill battle, I believe, 
for the parent who doesn't want to vaccinate, Absolutely. particularly if the schools are mandating it and particularly if there's no real exemption. Now, there may be a certain exemptions. Perhaps a child has certain allergies. Perhaps one vaccine is better than another. Right. Um, you know, there, there's going to be all of that, that information that's going to be circulated as more research is done. But look, we have a, a, a lot of, of the population still who probably do not believe that vaccination should occur. I mean, uh, a right? lot, right? And, and and it's surprising to me personally, right? I, I, I certainly couldn't wait for my vaccine. Could right? not come fast enough. I was right. like, three weeks ago, I was like, stick me now. Like, it's, I've been in my house since March of last year, and I have an autoimmune disease. And I'm like, just someone find me. I mean, I would have done anything. Exactly. And, right. and let's just say you have an autoimmune disease. Are you going to want a child no. at no. your home playing with one of your children who is not vaccinated? And... Are we going to start asking this question? Are we going to start identifying people who are vaccinated versus not vaccinated? That was my no, next question for you. Right. right. And 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 I think that's going to be really important because people need information. They they need to know whether whether people are vaccinated. Look, my my client couldn't have been more surprised that his children were not vaccinated because I, I will say that the mother had sworn up and down that she had vaccinated the children. Now, what happens in that case? In that particular case, I will say we are going to to be asking that he be awarded certainly decision making in terms of medical decisions because not only have the children not been vaccinated, but he was deceived into oh believing God. that the children imagine. were vaccinated. And that is a whole other other important issue, right? So it, it, co-parenting, as you know, yes. is so important. Yes. And reaching consensus is really important. Having information, consulting with the pediatrician. You know, even when we've had this issue of virtual versus, um, you know, re, in-person learning, my first question has been, Ask the pediatrician, what does the pediatrician say? And be guided by, by the pediatrician. You selected this pediatrician, so you must have agreed on that. Right. Then you know what happens, though, too, that I'm finding, Lisa, is that, for example, um, you know, my husband and I were good. But, for example, like my boyfriend, he has a different pediatrician clearly than mine, right? So then you have, well, my pediatrician said this and my pediatrician. So it's like even based on that, there's a, there's, there's a fight or an argument everywhere you turn, Right. And then social media, so you know he has friends that don't, and I have friends that don't, and we and we've we've actually like our our friends have been, you know, the great divide. It's very interest. It's it's just it's sad yet interesting. You know what I mean? Both. It's just it is, but it's not. You know, COVID has brought on a whole host of issues yes. that people did not really expect. I always say, as a matrimonial attorney, I really can can anticipate most issues that are going to come up. And for the most part, I can also anticipate what the answers should be. Mm-hmm. I can guide a client as to really what what the answer should be and how a judge will likely perceive um, the correct way to proceed, right? So the issues that have cropped up since this pandemic, however, are very new. So right. do I travel with my child? Do I, was I just travel ask you, with what my about travel? Right. That, that has been a major issue, particularly we are now in spring, right? So spring break is about to happen. And oh, I no. can't tell we you just got back. How, how many people have called me. Now, when we started this pandemic, I will tell you what was most interesting about, about when we started was people were getting ready or on spring break with their children. And so we had spent probably a good month at the beginning of this pandemic negotiating the return of children. People who were frightened to return their children back to New York, people who wanted to stay in places as far as as Hawaii or California, um, people who felt that it was safer in other parts of the country. You know, I'm about to write an article right now about people relocating during this pandemic and whether they should now have to return to where they first came from, which was New York, a whole other issue that, oh you know, at gosh. some point is going to come up. Anyone who's been through a divorce knows co-parenting is not all rainbows and sunshine especially when alcohol abuse is involved. Pair these challenges with the pandemic and you've got the perfect storm. Soberlink's alcohol monitoring system is the most convenient, reliable, and reasonable way for a parent to provide evidence that they're not drinking during parenting time. Soberlink's real-time alerts make it easy to negotiate with any party. 
judges rest assured that the child is safe, attorneys get court admissible evidence of sobriety, and both parents have empowerment and peace of mind. Do divorce right and trust the experts in remote alcohol monitoring technology to keep your kids safe, happy, and well-adjusted. Get an exclusive $50 off your device by emailing info at soberlink.com and mentioning doing relationships right. So then when people finally reached a point where we reached a consensus about where they were going to reside for, for most of the pandemic, we had issues as to travel for business because some people still had to travel for business and the following of the CDC rules and whether people were actually following those rules. And of course, there were parents who weren't following the of rules, course, who I can... didn't, you know, who didn't believe in the masks or didn't believe that they had to follow the rules. And we were very much telling our clients that they had to be guided by the CDC rules unless there was a specific recommendation from a pediatrician. Right. My mouth is on the floor. My, the people that are watching my video are like, Jennifer's, but my listeners are like, can't see me. I am, this is just, to me, it's just black and white, right? You follow the rules. You do what you're supposed to do. Everyone gets back. It's like, you know, it's like, just makes sense to me. But we just finished, my kids are in private school, so we had spring break was last week. And my sister's in Detroit. She's just about to leave. Like, and we are both like, what do we do? Like, our, we have seniors in high school. Right. So, you know, you it's that whole, like, you don't want them to miss but like at the same time, you're throwing them into the wolves. Like you're, I mean, Miami, looking at Miami at beach and they just put a restriction to eight o'clock. I mean, what, what are you doing? Then how, when they come back, do they go hybrid? Do they go, I mean, it's been an absolute, you, you just like pray, pray that everything's, I mean, I don't know. Well, that's the problem, right? And Miami was a good example. Yes. And and will now end up probably with some sort of a super spreader, right? Because of, of what has occurred in Miami. Yes. Because, you know, I, I think that people are largely not dependable. And that is the problem, right? And and everyone has been so locked up. Look, I, right. I had my first vaccine and my husband has had his vaccines okay. now. And I'm about to get my second vaccine this this Friday and I can't wait. Um, and, you know, I, I did have a small reaction to it, but frankly, I was told, you know, you still go ahead and, and get your second vaccine. And that is absolutely what I am planning to do because I know that that is the safest thing to do. Um, and there's just no question I'm going to get my second vaccine. But I will say this weekend was very warm. And so we were out and we did actually for the first time in probably about six months have lunch outside oh, with friends wait. right? who were six feet apart. And, and we were very cautious. And I said it literally felt like a vacation I that we I were taking. I so I understand that people want to be able to see their family. I haven't seen my daughter for Maybe. over a year. Maybe She's in California. Parents. It's mine too. Um, yeah. Right? And my daughter's wedding was postponed. So all of these oh. things um, occur. But I think that safety first. And I think that we, we just have to be super conscious of the fact that we do need to keep masking and the children need to learn that this may be a way of life. Yesterday I, w I was um, watching CNN and they are going to have a special this weekend um, about the fact that, you know, what is it going to look like going forward? And one of the headliners was that this isn't going to be the only pandemic. So we are going to have to deal with this. There is the variants, which we don't know enough about. They're but scaring they me to death. The variants, I mean, if you know anything that you can share, I am horrified because now they're saying that the vaccine is covering the variants and then I'm reading they're not covering the I, I mean, this, I'm having I don't think attacks. that they know enough. They don't know and enough. so okay. again, right, I think it's about safety. The variants absolutely exist right now. They are here. And so, you know, I double mask when I go into yeah, any my parents place. too. My parents okay. too. Yeah. I, and, and, you know, I guess that some, some of my clients look at me as the COVID police. I did have, <laughs> I, I remember early on, I had a case and um, the, uh, I represented the husband and the wife wanted to actually go somewhere with friends. And her attorney said to her, well, that might be okay with some attorneys on the other side, but you have the COVID police <laughs> on the other side. So you I don't think Lisa's that's going to be a good it. idea. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's all. And that social, social media is a mess too, because, you know, you see people like my dear friends who I, I love and, you know, like I, it's just, everyone's going to do their own thing. Right. But they're posting pictures and blah, blah, blah. And then I have friends that are like, well, I have the antibodies, which means they had COVID. So they feel like they're safe, but how long do the antibodies last and how long are you covered in it? People right. just don't know, right? And it just has been an absolute, I mean, it's a mess. 
It's uh, it's a lot about restraint, right? right? I, I think that it's about restraint and making sure that you use the best judgment that you can and also understanding that you have a co-parent right. who you need to be sensitive to in, in terms of, and maybe that means being more cautious than you would normally be yes. because you have a co-parent who is cautious. And Well, I definitely and, know. Yeah, my, my ex is, is, cannot deal with me. He's done. He's like, Jennifer, <laughs> you are nuts. But you know what? Thank God. Thank, I thank God every day that I have him because, you know, he realizes that I have an autoimmune disease, but he could be awful. I mean, right. he could be like, look, Jen, I'm taking the kids and I'm going, I don't, I don't know how, I don't know what I would do. So co-parents that are in that position where they have a, an ex that is like I'm the opposite polar. I mean, I don't, I don't know how they're managing. They're managing by working through this with attorneys, parent coordinators, therapists, yes. pediatricians. Um, you know, we have another situation where um, there was a child who was going to school and the school was not masking. And the pediatrician was very clear that the children needed to mask or the child should not go to the school. And it wasn't that they weren't masking at all, but they weren't masking during nap time. They weren't masking during meals. They weren't masking, you know. And and so it was certainly not a rigid um, sense of masking. And I, I think that people have to have some sort of a comfort level. Look, we've had parents who have not had any um, daycare they, right. they have not been able to send their children to daycare. But then on the other hand, they may have a child care person coming in who has been on the subway. So I'm not really sure that that really worked right. for them because right. then the child care person ended up unfortunately contracting COVID right. and, the per, and the child would have been better in the daycare facility right. perhaps exactly. where maybe it was a little bit more you know, watched over and cautious in terms of this. So I think that this is this is one of many, many areas. There are so many. I think that there's going to be a, um, a feeling of wanting to homeschool children now because then they won't necessarily have to, to take the vaccine. And I think also people have gotten used to, in some cases, homeschooling their children and believe that that is a benefit to their children. That's always been... Um, a little bit tricky in terms of the court system. Um, I think that most people um, generally and most judges generally think that children should be in a school setting and socialized and, um, you know, work being with other children. And so, you know, I always try to explain to my clients that they are before judges who have their own views. They can't help but have their own of course, views. That's like me. I'm like, I, when I was thinking about doing the podcast, I'm like, am I going to be able to be in part? I, I, I can't. I, I have my own views. And everyone, I mean, I'm very, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, you could get the vaccine or you couldn't. I'm like, no, get, I mean, I can't. I'm right. pro-vaccine, period. So right. I just, I knew when I was doing this podcast that I was going to have to say very clearly, I am pro-vaccine. And I can't, I, I'm not going to. Being yes, bad. look, I, I'm pro-vaccine too. I don't really understand this concept of no vaccines. And mm -hmm. as I said, you know, that first case that I had done, um, the experts all came in. The experts all said the children should, the child should be vaccinated. Um, no I one really put forth an argument that seemed um, as if it was, it certainly didn't convince the judge right. that the child should York, be vaccinated. In New York, what age are they vaccinating kids? Well, they're, they're in New York for COVID, not at all until I okay. think 16 right yeah, now. Yeah, us too. Okay? My kids 16. were both able to get it, so 16. Right. I think they're just, I mean, no one is vaccinating children, I think, at 16 yet, unless there's particular circumstances, right. because right now, we still have the age, I think, at age 60 right now, Yes. Um, unless there is specific circumstances right. um, as to being overweight or right. um, having certain health issues, sure. or if you are, are fortunate enough, there are sometimes leftover vaccines That's at the end of us. the day, which is how I ended up getting a Me vaccine. Too. I mean, they were literally, would have been throwing the vaccine out they weren't even doing high risk I'm, I'm you know autoimmune they weren't even doing that yet it's, it's group four and I was lucky enough to get it because they had vaccines at the end of the day so right so I was I on mean, a waiting list 
Right, and that that is the fortunate piece of it. But I think that um, we have not reached an area yet where where young children are going to be vaccinated. But we are now starting to talk again about there's a new school year coming, whether children should be in person or remote. And I think the general feeling is that there will be enough people vaccinated that children will go in person. Um, But look, that could all change with the variants. I know. And I have two questions before you go, if you don't mind. I'm thinking about summer camp sleepover camps and I'm thinking about college again in the fall because of course selfishly I have a kid that's working as a counselor at summer camp sleepaway camp and I'm horrified but now he got the vaccine so I feel a little better and then of course one going to Syracuse in the fall and I just feel like what a I mean I don't I don't even know right I mean will they make it mandatory for college kids so I don't know that they're going to make it mandatory. I'm going to hope that they do. I, I, I do believe that summer camp is going to be another um, debate. Yep. I, I think that um, you know people are getting very antsy, and they do want their children to be involved in certain activities oh. now, and we're starting to see movement toward that, karate and um, you know, gymnastics. Yep. And, but all of those, the children can be masked. Um, I think that... Camp is going to be a very iffy situation. Last year, I remember having this, you know, dispute with parents, and they some were insisting that their children could go to summer camp, and I was saying I don't really think that's at all happening. No, ours didn't, okay, ours didn't and, happen, right? Right, and it didn't happen. Um, I think it depends on how fast people are vaccinated. Um, that's going to be the question: is how fast we can get this country vaccinated, yeah. and maybe then children will go to some portion of summer camp. In some ways, sleepaway camp might be easier than day camp oh, because they're they in a pod essentially, yes. Yes. right? And people aren't coming and going from that pod, um, so that might be more of a possibility. <laughs> but I- I'm not hearing a lot of people asking me interestingly about summer camp this year. They seem to be more focused. On what they're going to be doing for the school year starting in September than they are in summer camp. I think most people have decided to lay low Mm -hmm. um, for the summer camp events. Yep. Yep. Wow. This has been, I mean, thank you so much for being here because I, you know, I was nervous and I'm like, you know what, I'm going to do it because I think it's important. I think it's really important. So do you have any tips or like a little nugget of anything that I can leave? So I do. I mean, I think that the main issue is if you disagree with your Um, co-parent that you need to see um, the experts right the so-called experts go to the pediatrician listen to what the pediatrician has to say work with a parent coordinator um, speak to your attorneys you know these are um, we are seeing so much of this on an everyday basis that we're going to be able to take the temperature of the court right because we're we're there every day so don't do it in isolation Don't make a decision without having all of the information. And I would say be conservative because being conservative doesn't doesn't really hurt. And I think right now being conservative is going to mean vaccinating. I agree. So that that's going to be the issue, right? And if the pediatrician is recommending vaccinations and the CDC is saying that vaccinations are safe, I think that the judges are going to err on the side of that caution as opposed to no vaccines. And Absolutely. remember, these judges are going to be vaccinated, right. right? So they're going to have gone through it too. Right, right. Absolutely. Oh, this has been a great, I cannot even tell you how grateful I am that you're here. Thank you so much. So Lisa, obviously you can't, you, you, people can't reach, you're only in New York, right? So, I am only in New York. Okay, but your information is everywhere now, so yes. I love that. But if people wanted to read, you have two, one article that they can absolutely find, right? And you're on LinkedIn. Yes, I am on LinkedIn and I am on Facebook. Okay. And my articles are all posted on LinkedIn. I Perfect. had written an article on this um, for the New York Law Journal, and that has been posted um, in LinkedIn. And I'm easy to find under Lisa Ziderman. Awesome. And I'm on the internet, um, and um, I have a website, lisaziderman.info. So um, I, I'm sorry, lisaziderman.com. So it, it's easy enough to find me as well as all of my articles about awesome. these types of issues. And I'm going to put everything in the show notes as well. So it will be real easy to find you now. And I appreciate everything. And your. this has been a great, great episode. So everybody, listen carefully. Lisa Ziderman, it's Z I E. It's Z-E-I. Oh, it's like my wine trap, W-E-I. Okay, so Z-E-I-D-E-R-M-A-N. And reach. you need to read her articles. You're very smart. 
And, and Thank you. I feel very smart having been, been here today. I feel like I learned a little bit more. And please, everyone, I know I'm going to say it. Just like I said, I was you know, pro-Biden. I'm pro-vaccine. Get out there. Do please, 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 please. If you're my listener, go listen. Go listen. Get your vaccine. Be safe. Everyone mask up. Keep wearing those masks and be everyone be good. Um, and as usual, peace, love, and so much truth, y'all. Lisa, thank you for being here today. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Was a pleasure. It. Okay, and thank you so much.